New Orleans before Katrina to me was uh, you felt like you could grow from it. You felt like you could start something and then go somewhere and finish it. As a kid, I, I was I was the uh, the dreamer. I felt like I could do anything. People got in trouble a lot in my house. It was all boys. We right all back to back. My mom and pops went like straight five years and just got all of us out of the way. <laughs> At one point, we tried to do music together, me and my brothers. It didn't work out. We had this big fight, and that was the first time I ever got passionate for anything. My mama was my right hand. That was my, my everything. So I was basically, I guess you can call it a mama's boy. And I took everything she said to heart. So when she said my voice was a gift, I believed it. She used to say it all the time. Everybody, her, my uncle, my grandmother. They would always say it when, when my uncle would get on the piano and they were like, you know, come sing, huh? Let, let, let little one come do it. And then afterwards, everybody would be like, man, you got a gift, man. God's gonna use you to do big things. And I didn't know what that was, but I just, thought, okay, you put God in a sentence, you put me in that same sentence, and then you say big things, I'm automatically gonna try to figure out what that is. I put this song out, and you is responsible for all of this shit that's happening right now, because y'all stream this out of it, and, and like y'all pushed it, and y'all told the world, like y'all the tastemakers of the world, so I wanna personally thank y'all for giving me a purpose in life, because that's my purpose, y'all my purpose. I was a late bloomer when it comes to music because I wasn't really allowed to indulge in secular things. Being the curious kid I was, I just would try to listen to music when I could. I would listen to music when nobody was looking. I used to steal records from my dad and that started my music discovery. We used to just take whatever was in the room because he would lock it. We always found a way to pick it. We'd go in there and just listen to all his little Richard Pryor tapes. And he had everything. There was a lot of guys I just mistook for Stevie Wonder because I guess I loved him so much. The positive in that was I didn't limit myself to putting music in a genre, a box, or a time. I listened to music for what it is. I listened to music for its bare, its bare existence. Uh, and if it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. I never got into genres. I just I just got into music because it all hit me at once. And I think that's the advantage. The decision to make music was tough for me. While I was pursuing music, the stuff that I was going through made me feel like I wasn't really doing it yet. So it was a lot of indecisiveness. I didn't know if I wanted to. I didn't know if I wanted to keep going. I didn't know if I wanted to do it. I didn't know if I was doing it. I didn't know if I was doing it right. If I was doing it, I didn't decide until I had so many fans telling me that they believed in me and this, this music helped them. And they, they gave me the confirmation that, okay, I decided. My mama moved a lot. So um, moving around was part of what I did. After a while, I just started calling myself a nomad. And I had a bunch of nomad friends. I had a homie who brought attention to us by bringing girls over for me to sing their names. Oh, he sang my name, can you sing my name? Sang their name and he collected money, then we eat at lunch. That's how, That was basically the hustle. <laughs> it became a thing and I got a little more confidence and I started like writing songs and poems to him. That maybe began um, me understanding what other people might want to hear if I'm writing them something. When I was writing with Neo and and Ella and many other artists. I didn't get the feeling of wanting to be the artist in that moment. Um, I just wanted to just give them a new song. I just wanted to make and create a body of work or create a moment and and challenge myself to do it. I love the, the part of writing songs just as much as singing them. And I could find fulfillment in just creating a piece that can fulfill whatever the purpose is, like like I was saying, I didn't know what it was. So if it was just writing, I was gonna just keep writing and until I couldn't, but I just felt like I was empty and it wasn't getting it. And I just was like, screw it, I'm not writing nothing else. And that was it. And I decided to um, to change my name because it was the moment I stopped um, writing for other people only. Lucky is when preparation meet opportunity. You know, you always gotta be ready for what's going on out here. 
You know what I'm saying? And you gotta be ready every day. So it's like lucky day every single day. I had never used the word lucky. Like that was something that people would be like, "Wow, well, you're not lucky." Like lucky means you ain't do it yourself. It means uh, it just happened by chance. You blessed because God did it. And I would just be like, I feel that. I feel that. But um, what if you know luck is something more tangible than you think? We don't know what we're made of. Same thing we're afraid of might improve us. The most pain that I felt was when I tried to fall in love. And I fell in love. The, that, that person was playing love. But I, I guess I took it so serious. And I took it so serious and it hurt. The first thing I wanted to do was, uh, I wanted to talk about like some down bad type stuff about her. And I said, hold up, let me switch it up. Because I, I was on my optimistic waves. I just wanted to be hopeful about love and about past situations, future situations, and everything that this person hated me for. I wanted to, to say, maybe, you know, if you want to take trips, maybe we could take a trip like this. Look, I'm smoking. You want to smoke with me? We together. Um, we could go on a trip together in our head, and then we could come back. Um, it's free too. It's like 35 or 8. <laughs> what does painted mean to you, and how do you define that? Why did you come up with this title? Uh, Cause it's like a messy like wall of emotions, and like I felt like it was, I literally felt like it was too much to like put out at one time. So it just became a lot of um, emotions that's on one canvas, and to me that's like. A, a painting. That's how I did. You throw the paint on the wall, and then you create the paint. That's how I create. A lot of people like to have what they have in mind, and then paint. I I don't know how to do that. One more time, man. This is our last song for the whole tour, so we about to go for a minute. That's cool. I'm very grateful for all y'all. I would say my growth as a performer. Um, it comes with each show. My band is a band of at least five. I try to tell them all the time that they're amazing. They, they're modest. But I, I like it because it reminds me of being a child with my brothers. It gas me up. I run off a few. Everything that I look for, everything that I try to pay attention to, I try to like recycle it as few in my life and in my music. How do you feel now? <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> the energy was dumb, man. I can't even describe San Francisco. Might have been the craziest crowd. Real Games was special. Real Games actually came last. It was the last song we did. We kind of knew we had something. And we was like, yo, what is this? Like, what is the sound? Because they're not going to say it's R&B. They're probably just going to throw it in some crazy stuff because they ain't never heard it before. My whole thing was, I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't really care. I'm genreless. They can call me what they want. And he just said, okay, bet. Because it feels like, like funk, soul, trap type stuff. He sent me that track with like this lead guitar on it. And right when I'm thinking it's gonna get funkier, it breaks down into like some, some, some soul trap. So I'm like, oh, wow. I don't know how to write to nothing like this. <laughs> And we, we started going, so he said, come in the studio. I go in the studio and literally started freestyling. And somehow I just came out and whatever wasn't there, we started writing what, what was missing. I loved you back then, back when, when nobody else was around. Who had your back when, back then, everything was beating you down. It became a moment for me because it helped me realize, like, you, you can mesh. You can mesh genres and, you know, you, you can, there's no limit. There's no limit. There's no limit to this this music thing. And maybe because people don't see that somehow, that's my purpose. Maybe my purpose is to show people it's lim I can you can mesh it all. Like there is no separation in music. It should just be music. And that's it. That's it. That's all I wanna do. Start over back how blood, sweat, tears, no foul. How did things go so soft? So tired of trying to figure out these games. My grandmother passed, rest in peace, and she left a bunch of vinyls in her storage. And 
I didn't really know her like that, but she got some music. And I started running them. And she got Roberta Flack. She got like Curtis Mayfield. She got all this other stuff. And the whole time I'm like, wow, this music lasted through time. This music still resonates and it's infinite. It's the only thing that we know of so far that that's infinite. It can go to other galaxies and live. Um, and it's like, for, for me to have the ability to be a vessel in that whole, whatever it is, that that gift or whatever is, is not to be taken taken for granted. It's an undefeated weapon and it's love. It's, it's just love. And music harmonizes with love so well that I can't help but to, but to put my little two cents in it.